Welcome to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2X. The X stands for Xbox. Seriously, this is an Xbox launch title for the original Xbox back in 2001. Released before the Xbox got the release of Tony Hawk 3, but after Tony Hawk 3 had come out on the PS2. So they had to rush out something to launch with that console, why not a port of Tony Hawk 2? Now, this isn't necessarily just a port. If you did not play this game, you definitely did miss out. There are some features here that I am eager to show off. And we'll do that on a new career. I was originally going to play as Tony Hawk, but then I found out, as did the entire internet, that Tony Hawk is doing fucking NFTs again. Fuck that guy. Uh, Bob Burnquist as well. Also doing NFTs. The whole system is rotten. I did check Rune Glyphberg is not because he is uh, basically retired from pro skating. So uh, lucky for us, we get to play as my favorite skater. Uh, I do not have access to other career paths at the moment. But uh, this is a new costume for good old Rune Glyphberg basketball outfit, which notably several inches taller than his default outfit. I don't know why, <laughs> but uh, I'll take it. Just to differentiate him from previous playthroughs where we saw Rune Glyphberg, who is still a very solid character. Happy to play as him. <sighs> Let's just pretend the other skaters don't exist for now and just get right into it. Old familiar levels, like I said, mostly a port. As usual, we have to change the soundtrack to my own personal music, but it should still be more than adequate. So here's a new feature. In original Tony Hawk 2, when you turned around to the starting gate of the first level, it was just a brick wall, but here we have a whole control tower here at the hangar. Apparently it is still a functional control tower, despite appearances. Whole outdoor modeled area. Honestly would have been cool to go out there, but it's cool nonetheless. Now let's actually try to get some goals done while there's still time. It won't be too much of a problem though. Tony Hawk 2X is much easier than the normal Tony Hawk 2. And uh, that is not a bad thing. Normal Tony Hawk 2 is absurdly hard. So I don't mind having this easier version available to me. While we're here, get this gap. And the barrels. Very good. So yeah, this the physics in this game are much more friendly to the player. Normally that gap is extremely difficult to hit. But we've seen the original version for the PS1. Obviously this version also looks a lot better. And that jump is normally obscenely difficult. But we do still have the big drop. So when we return, we will come right back to this wind tunnel and get the score goals. But we got all the other goals. Very nice. And in this video, I will be getting every single goal and every single cash pickup for 100% completion. Never saw that before because it is just too damn difficult to do on Tony Hawk 2 normally. At least in a reasonable time frame, unless you get really, really good at the game, which I am not, as you can tell by the fact that I missed that $50 pickup. Oh, gotta open this again. But yeah, Tony Hawk 2X here. 
They might have rebalanced it for the sake of Xbox owners, who may or may not have previously played a Tony Hawk game, because the Xbox was a new system, so there had been no previous Tony Hawk games for it. But whatever the reason, the people who ported this game made you jump higher, move faster. In general, you have much better control, and the control is much more responsive. Making that fall all the more embarrassing. There go. So we'll get a huge pop-up on screen once we actually do get all the cash. We got the difficult one, I think, uh, nope, got that one. So I don't know where the remaining cash is. That's a good start. Fortunately, it is all quite easy to find. And the score goal should be effortless, especially for Rune. Rune, despite being one of the less well-known and popular characters in the series, has the Christ Air, which makes him among the best characters in the entire series. Objectively. From a gameplay perspective. Christ Air is legitimately one of the best moves in the entire series. Because it is a grab special worth a lot of points. And you can hold it to make it worth even more points spin it to add multipliers. Did I get this cash icon? Yeah. Let's go for a higher view of the level. See what that gets us. Get this thing out of here. Oh, you gotta get the helicopter out before that cash icon spawns. That was the issue. Alright. 100% goals and cash. Never seen that before in any of these playthroughs. It's normally too much of a pain to do. So even though we will be doing that for every single level in this game, I imagine this video will be roughly the same length as the last video I did for legitimate Tony Hawk 2 where I did not do anywhere near all the goals. Let's do some score grinding. Because it's super easy to get the score goals here. We're still very early in the game. And Rune is overpowered. Lip tricks are, for the most part, completely useless, but they do exist. They're worth a decent amount of points, although nowhere near enough points to be viable for late game plays. So, I probably won't be using them except for required goals later on. So might as well point out that they are accomplished by holding triangle on a lip. You don't have to balance them at all. After you hold triangle for too long, you will simply fall flat on your face. Uh-oh. Let's switch to uh, grabbing cash icons. Ew. I never noticed the fart sound that uh, plays when you get too close to the bathroom there. I was lucky enough not to be able to hear this catalogical humor over the normal excellent game soundtrack. But uh, being deprived of that as I currently am, I do have to hear that garbage. <laughs> you may well have missed it. right under the wire. Could go get a lot more cash. 
up our stats and go through this even more easily. Actually, with load times so quick in this version of the game, it would actually be beneficial to get our stats up pretty soon. So regardless how this turns out, I probably am going to go do that. But this level is very, very spread out and complicated. Difficult to route. And wall rides. They were first implemented... No, they were first implemented in Tony Hawk 1. I was going to say they first appeared in Tony Hawk 2. But they were improved, and then the game expected you to actually use them as of Tony Hawk 2. And therein lies the tragedy of wall rides in Tony Hawk 2. In Tony Hawk 1, I said they shouldn't be there. And for a casual player, that is true. But for high-level expert players, they use wall rides to absolutely break the game to pieces. Wall rides are essential for speedruns. They allow you to do things like complete all goals in many of the levels in uh, well under a minute. The IL goals uh, records for the entirety of Tony Hawk 1 are like 30 seconds. Because they're just leaping to the top of buildings that uh, casual players would take minutes to get to the top of. We have one shot to get the secret tape here. Even if I do that, though, it will kind of be a waste. Because I'll have to come back and get the secret tape again to get to Carlsbad. So that's fine. Decent showing. Two of the more pain in the ass goals. The uh, school bells are probably the biggest pain in the ass in the whole game. Okay. We definitely want maxed out speed, maxed out Ollie. Uh, yeah. All of our vert stats. You know what? Not all of them. We'll make sure we can grind just a little bit. It is useful to be able to grind. Even as a vert exclusive skater like Rune here. And we'll get another 1500. More than that, actually. Because of the cash icons. Very good. All the way over to this roof, and... One more cash icon. Oh, I do gotta get the roll call rails. And I am very far from being able to do that. So at least one more lap through this level. This one's pretty irritating to get. We need to get on top of that awning. Very nice. And on top of the other awning. All for paltry amounts of cash. Entirely for completion's sake. That really is just tedious, busy work, collecting all the cash icons. I thought I overshot the secret tape there. Now since all my vertical stats, except for one, are maxed out now, let's try something ridiculous. Didn't work. I'm gonna go for the hardest gap in at least this level, perhaps the entire game. Pretty good. Yes! Oh! I was a millimeter short. If I had maxed out hang time, that probably would have done it. 
but I have to land on top of that building, which I skimmed the edge of before falling and dying. The gaps in this game are very difficult for the most part. There's one near impossible one in basically every level. Miss that. I gotta go over here for that cash icon. And then immediately retry so that I get the roll call rail. But retries are very, very fast, which is another reason this video will be comparable to the full playthrough where we didn't get everything on the PS1, where load times are atrocious. The absolute worst thing about original Tony Hawk was those load times. Perhaps the main reason to play this version. And there we go. I do not have all the cash icons though. What am I missing? Cleanup is always a pain. Oh, whatever. Oh, I know what it is. Just about to reset. Boom. Now I don't need to. Another one down. On to our competition, which, as Rune, once again, we are going to dominate effortlessly. Uh oh. Too much air. An occasional problem with the Rune. Especially in this version of the game, actually. That can happen a lot where you go just way, way, way too high. And this is the only game in the series that has the big drop feature. I call it a feature. It is a punishment for jumping too high. Causes you to bail if you uh, fall from a distance that a real skater would not realistically be able to land. I think that whole thing was added, the big drop thing, was added because there are gaps in this game that are based off of real gaps, like the Leap of Faith in the school. And the real gap is very, very impressive because you fall like two stories and somehow land it. And in order to simulate that in the video game, they had to make it so that you fall if you drop two stories. Even though it is incredibly unfun in video game form. Some cash icons in the secret area. Here's a bidet joke. One of the few things they knew about France when they made this game. The gross sense of humor. Unfortunately, not much they could do to change that. This is the grossest game in the entire series. I do think the PS1 version might be the best designed of the single session games, but it is certainly not the most fun. That said, it is a real like accomplishment when you do anything in Tony Hawk 2. The original version. Uh, nailed that in just two heats. Uh, we'll spend some more cash. Specifically, I wish to purchase a trick. Normally I don't do this. But I've talked about it before. The airwalk is inexplicably broken to be worth way, way more points than it ought to be. And it's super easy to pull off. And it's gonna carry us to victory. I should spend the rest of my money though. Max out the final air stat and some manual, sure. That'll do. That should honestly have a set for the entire rest of the game, but 
I'll head back. We're gonna have more cash than we know what to do with. This is a decent place for vertical score grinding. The problem is that the two quarter pipes are so far away from each other that you waste a lot of time getting to them. But here's our airwalk. Worth tons of points. As the Christ air degrades in value, it is worth switching to the airwalk because it is worth almost as many points. And as though Rune weren't good enough already, he also has his own special grind. That should, yep, get us a six score. So what other things can we accomplish here? Cash icons. Note that the Snack Shack is now an officially branded Taco Bell. They sold new advertisements when they made this port just a year after the original Tony Hawk 2. <laughs> Gotta squeeze every penny out of this thing. Although I do think the developers of this version, uh, Treyarch, did have a fair amount of passion for it. it. Wasn't just a paycheck, although it was most certainly a paycheck. That's always a tough subway token to get. And the A is also a pain to get. Let's see if I can get it. I missed the jump. Yeah. You have just a tiny little ramp on the corner of that statue. So we do gotta go back in. But that was the plan from the beginning. There's the K again. Spin around for no reason. Actually, we have to do this jump twice. The second time's gonna be even harder. So there we go. Now we need a lot of speed to get a very difficult gap right here because there's cash on top of the statue. Skate letters are out of here. We have half the time limit remaining. Although I do got to get the hydrants. They've got a bit of a questionable hit questionable hitbox for what counts as an Ollie over them. We're gonna have to decode it though. There's a cash icon floating over that wall, which is the bane of my existence. And one more hydrant to jump over. Can't do too much in here just yet, because I will have to go back on top of these subway tracks multiple times, I think. I don't even know why I'm doing that many tricks. Um, yeah, there's a cash icon up there. Wasn't in time. I did too many tricks to get there. All that's left is to grind the subway rails and get the rest of that cash, though. Can certainly handle that in a single run. So here's the subway rails, but I need to leap off of them. There are, of course, gaps where you leap off of that rail uh, out above the subway and land on the awning in a grind. 
more intuitive than you would think, though. That one's pretty accomplishable. There's something I do way too often. Fall right off the subway. The first level had no real difficult gaps, mercifully enough. But every other level, all over the place. Kinda wish I would stayed on the rails there. Because uh, getting that $100 bill is easiest when you're on the rails. So I gotta get that one above the fence. Worth it. And there's one more hidden in the corner over here. And I think after I get this one, I should be able to show off something else that I wanted to show off. That's out of the way. Oh, hell yeah, I didn't think I was going to get that. But, right here, a pole just spawned, leading over the wall. Easy way to get up into the secret area. No real indication of why that happens, but I'm pretty sure going up the quarter pipe to get the $50 bill all the way at the edge of the secret area is what caused that pipe to appear. I don't know, it doesn't make any sense. Now we can go to the next competition, weirdly enough. But there is an entire level we would skip if we did that. And uh, that would leave my 100% goals objective very much unfulfilled. So let's go to Venice. Probably should have had a better plan starting out. Because right now I don't know what goal I'm going for. Don't want that one. I did just notice. Taco Bell grand branded garbage cans with flies buzzing around them. Probably not the branding advertisement they were hoping for. <laughs> Generally, you want to write a clause in your contract to say, don't call our product garbage. Uh, there's an up, up, and away gap here in uh, Venice as well. which is quite difficult to get. Need to get a tremendous amount of speed. Another hundred bucks. How are the Slam Bros doing? Uh, yep, still gigantic chalk outlines. They're just harder to see. Surprised I both laid to that and got the money. So I was going for Ollie. I guess I can probably finish that off in time. Ah, usually the secret tape is very easy to get in this version of the game. Whereas in actual Tony Hawk 2, quite difficult. You need to make a really inhuman jump. I'm definitely not going to get Ollie in time. So I'll take another... Another crack at the secret tape. I've only got one chance at this point. I have no chance at this point. Best thing I could probably do here is get the spray cans and the transfer gaps. Let's give that a shot. Missed the spray can and the transfer gap. Glorious. So that transfer gap is nearly impossible on the PS1 version. That's a gross exaggeration, but it is very difficult. Yep, need that. Didn't expect it to kill me, but that's fine. 
Weird jumps here. I'm hitting these half pipes at bizarre angles. That one though, I hit it pretty perfectly. Just went flying forward anyway. That one I expected to die. And indeed I did. Better. We'll come back for the cash later on. The hitbox on ollieing the magic bum is notoriously janky. Very likely to just not register. And once again, I don't have enough time to get all of them. I just realized I'm still missing one of the transfer gaps. We got this. We don't got it. Damn. <laughs> Picked up just a bit of cash in that last run. And I didn't get the spray cans either. Totally blew that one. That's because one of the spray cans is right there. Tried to chase too many different goals. Without a good enough plan. Once again for safety, get the spray can first. Then go for this. Yes. By the skin of my teeth. And my jump stats are a little too high. A lot of things were placed for the PS1 version's physics. So the more generous physics here actually screw up some of the precision platforming you gotta do. You can also sort of right yourself while you're falling, if you're not falling into a quarter pipe. And that's what I did there when I was landing on the roof. That's why it looked so bizarre and I didn't bail. I tried to do it again there, but the angle was just too off to be saved. All the spray cans, and now all the transfers. Gotta head back and hit that one again. Because we gotta grind the Venice Ledge. Uh oh. There oh! I upgraded my rail stat specifically so that wouldn't happen. Brutal. We can still route that in to this next run here, where I avenge all the magic bum. Just goes straight from spawn point to spawn point as he teleports around. The cardboard he's lying on is always there. So even when the bum is not, you know where he's going to be. One of the few ways in which the game actually tells you what you need to do. In general, this game is kind of stingy with information when you're trying to accomplish the goals. Making a blind playthrough of the game rather tedious. I'd never played this game until last year, and uh, playing it for the first time was brutal. certainly could have had a lot more fun, but design decisions were made to optimize difficulty over enjoyment. 
Once you know the game inside and out, as most people do in this day and age, the game is a blast. It's just not beginner friendly. Which is weird for the second game in the series. Almost all the other games are much, much easier than this one. Still haven't gotten Skate, surprisingly enough. But that's pretty easy to do. Uh oh, not if I do that. Yep, that's a retry. And the skate lives will just take us on a nice tour of the rooftops. See the A back here. We got Ska. I did just learn that famous ska band, the Mighty Buddy Boss Tones, broke up recently. And it was because the lead singer is a virulent anti vaxxer. And the rest of the band did not agree with his horrible views. That kind of complicates things, flying off the building there. Oh, I got the wee little roof gap. There are actually three gaps there. Alright, on the corner of this building. Here we go. All cash icons, very good. Kind of figured there would be some more cleanup left. But no. Unfortunately, I'm going very slow and I'm not sure why. Let's get special so we speed up. Yes! Very generous hitbox. Obviously, PS1 version, we would not have had nearly enough distance to get all the way out there. And all that's left is score grinding. But yeah, I don't want to make this video entirely about bad news. What with uh, Tony Hawk, Bob Burnquist, Mighty Mighty Boss Tones. But uh, obviously we're playing an Activision game. And it recently came out that Activision has also been funneling their profits into uh, homophobic politicians. By way of their CEO, Bobby Kotick, who is also just a horrific human being. Total nightmare. So yeah, this game depresses the hell out of me. Despite the fact that it's really, really good and I enjoy playing it. Shame that. But uh, you can't leave that stuff undiscussed. And just do not support Activision Blizzard. Uh, they've been absorbed by Microsoft, hopefully they'll be destroyed. But Microsoft also... Not the best company in the world. It's villains all the way down. I need to change my deck. I am sick of seeing Rune's uh, child photo on the bottom of his board there. So... Just a few more points. Need to start doing air walks. So I've completely ruined the Christ air. There we go. I could have gone a lot faster. But we're done with another level. Most depressing level, I find. So, might as well have gotten all the depressing talk out of the way. 
We'll start with the board, just so I don't accidentally spend all of my money first. The dragon one is pretty cool, but that elephant, nothing beating it at the moment. Once again, I don't think our board stats are going to do anything. But at this point, our uh, air stats also don't do much. On to another competition. And going for 100% in competitions actually does make them a little more interesting than just score grinding. Because we got to get this cash. Uh-oh. That's not going to do it. And turn back around. Get this cash icon, which leads us to the secret area key. Which we need to open because there's another cash icon over by the G-pad. The G-pad, which is practically entirely off screen. Jeep also did not get their money's worth, just like Taco Bell. And there's some cash over at the snack bar. Nice. Completely blew the heat, but there's only like two more cash icons we need. Very easy to get them. Actually, I think there's three cash icons, but still easy to get. And I'll just take grind around here. One more open. Another cash icon. Onto the secret area. Where we gotta hop the van. Hop, hop the van. Nice responsive controls at least. Making it rather doable. Uh, I could use a few more points here. That should get it, yeah. Then just one more heat of score grinding. Shouldn't take anywhere near the entire heat. Because we have air walk. Completely busted. Definitely got it already. Even still, ending on a face plant. Still number one. We can go right to the last level. But no. Um, sure, we got tons of cash once again. Buy even more stats. And that's the last batch of stats I'm gonna buy. Lip balance is utterly useless. So something they added in this game was rail balance meters. When we're grinding, we got that rail, the, the balance thing. That was not present in original Tony Hawk 2. In Tony Hawk 2, the only thing that had a balance meter was the manual. They still did not have balance meters for lip tricks because you didn't balance lip tricks, you just hold a button. And the game balances itself for the allotted duration. Now I need to get back up to that secret area two more times, because I failed to get the cash icon. But you did see I got up there pretty easily. It is much more manageable in 2x 
compare it to two original. Would have been cool if I had made that. There is a way to wall grind. Do a wally up there. But I don't know that way. Missed that jump pretty badly. Can't get the skate letters in this heat. If I'm not more careful, I'm not even going to get the Liberty Bells. Yes. That saves some time. Getting those last two cash icons prevents us from having to do that whole thing. Getting up to the balcony several more times. Now we can focus on goals. And the statue to Tony Hawk 2X. They changed the statue for some reason. They made a bunch of new textures for this version of the game. For absolutely no good reason. Gotta grind this awning. So no big deal that I missed the letter. Had to do it again anyway. Wrong grind. I did finally learn how to blunt slide though. Let's see if I can do it. There it is. Just plain blunt slide. Not nose blunt slide like I've done every other time. I accomplished that goal. I almost got the cash icon from up there. I'm gonna try that again. Because what I always used to do, yeah, was uh, grind the high wire and jump off halfway through to get that cash icon, which is much more difficult than what I just did. Got to knock that down, which is glitched in this version. We keep grinding, even though the pole has fallen down. Okay, one more letter. Normally, if you roll through the grass, you won't have enough speed to get to that letter. But you just move so damn fast in this version. That's not a problem. That one should not be grabbable with just a boneless, with no speed, but once again, very generous to the player. This version is super fun to play. Honestly, if you're not playing as yet, like really, really great at Tony Hawk 2, this is a very good version to play. I imagine the recent remake is probably pretty good from a physics perspective, because it uses the physics of much more recent games. But you know, this version just as good. Very arcadey feel to it. I like it a lot. Looks like I got all the cash icons out there. So on to the secret area. We can get a preposterously high combo there. If I had my special up. It was still a very high combo, but I wasn't able to use specials in the process, making it worth much less than it could have been. Cash icon up here, which I missed. And I also have to do all the lip tricks back here, which, in addition to being worthless from a point perspective, have very bad detection. Let's 
Let's show off some more of the lit tricks, though. Not just rock and roll every time. Oh, you do gotta land it. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna get this at this point. Quite impossible. Because the fourth lip trick was all the way over the other half pipe. And now we can just beeline to the secret area. Do some cleanup. Ugh. Once again, failed to get special there. And crashed and died. Rock and roll again. There we go, a new one. The disaster. Weird detection once again. Helps me to leap out of the half pipe rather than up it. Yeah, coyote time is very, very useful for a lot of the gaps. Very, very bad if you're going for score. Because it does work if you're going out of a half pipe. You are able to jump slightly after you leave the edge of the half pipe but you get much less height when you do that. You would think it would be more because you'd be leaping slightly higher, but no. Realistic physics somewhat apply even to coyote time. I need a tremendous amount of points. Could get it with Street Tricks, but yeah. I didn't get the last Lit Trick. Got too distracted by score grinding. Whoops. So I gotta do it all again. This time, we'll start with Special. Ugh. Awful. And I was trying to do my special grind there. I seem to have forgotten the input. Let's see. Yeah, that ain't it. Weird. And ruined the whole point value at the end there. We'll go for minimums at this point. No need to be showy with a 100,000 point combo. Which you can very easily get if you use your special grinds on these rails here. There we finally go. Now, Vertrix in the half pipe. Hopefully, I don't launch out of it again. And that I do launch into it. Yeesh. You notice the bridge above the half pipe here? The physics are so generous that it is quite possible to bounce off of the bridge up there thereby limiting your maximum height. And you actually do bounce off of it. Lose quite a bit of speed 
and uh, hit the ground much more quickly than you would. Because it, like, cancels your hang time. And at this point, it's just... Spin around. Spin to win. Do not crash and die. Good for nothing. You can actually read the graffiti in this version. If I get more perfect landings, that'll be worth quite a bit more points. I actually don't know how perfect landings work. Like, what percentage they increase your score by. It's obviously ruinous to get sloppy landings. As it should be. At least they don't make you bail completely, like Tony Hawk 1 would have. But sloppy and flawless landings were added to this version in Tony Hawk 2. Original Tony Hawk 2, nothing to do with this version. Another level down. They added just so much junk to this game. It's absurd. But pretty cool. A lot of experimentation, which they then pared down when they continued on with the series. The bull ring. Best thing to do would actually be hop into the bull ring itself and get the cash. Just so you don't lose track of it, there are four in here. And if you don't get them all in one run, you will not remember where you left off. If you go too fast, obviously, when the cash pops out, it will pop out behind you. Last one. Don't have to do that ever again. Thankfully. Actually, could have accomplished something there, but I'll just do it now instead. With a unloaded texture on the quarter pipe. This version is very glitchy, if we're being honest. That was what I wanted to do, but I screwed it up such that I did not accomplish anything by doing so. But yeah, unloaded textures are unfortunately somewhat common. You may also notice that sometimes there'll be a single frame where you just see static. And that is in the game, like I'm seeing that as well. Not a recording error. Missed the cash icon, so I'll have to do this again. But I'll have to do everything again, because I also miss, miss the transfer. This is the hardest thing to do in the whole game. Minus some of the gaps. The hardest required thing to do in a 100% playthrough. We got this. Nope. At least we landed it. Now we can try it again. So this is sort of the intended way to do this. Get up T here. Yeah. And land on that wire. Takes a lot of speed. 
There we go. Get an extremely high combo. Would have been worth a lot of points if I'd landed it. But we have to do that again anyway. At least the crosswire is easier to get to. Not easier to grind, just easier to get to the area where it is. Yeah, doing blind jumps. It's a thing Tony Hawk 2 loves. Not an easy thing. By any means. I'll take it. That'll get us first place for this heat. Hitting invisible walls. Also, the hitbox of the bull is gargantuan. That thing will hit you when you're, like, going up the quarter pipe here. Bull's going by. You'll still get knocked down. There is one cash icon remaining, I think. I am shocked I had enough speed to do that. This last cash icon is kind of a pain. It's the mirror of the one that we got on top of the banner before transferring to that one wire. Which means it is way, way, way up here. We're gonna need special. There we go. Now, to try and get so many points in so little time. Nope. That said, the points part is nothing. Not for Rune Glyphberg. Oh, we got the regular rolling gap and the wussy gap. For some reason, you need much more air to get the regular rolling gap in this version. The detection was much more generous on the PS1. I forgot to wrap that run up prematurely. Just because it's a waste of time to keep doing tricks after you get uh, 100k. That should do it. We'll do one more combo. Just to clutch it. There we go. Success. That should be 100% completion of the entire game. There's a people getting hurt video. We saw enough of that, I think. Another reason this game is so much faster is bail animations were sped up considerably over original Tony Hawk 2. Where bail animations were like 10 seconds each. But we did it. Three golds. Let us uh, enjoy Rune Glyphberg. Doing real live uh, Rune Glyphberg things. Yeah. 
Awesome job. Cleared out the entire game, unlocking Officer Dick. And when you unlock with different characters or additional characters, you unlock cheats. So as to modify how the game plays. And in this version, we also unlock an exclusive career campaign with additional levels. That gives you some hint of what we'll do next time I play Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2X. But, rather than watch the credits, we will reload my default career, where I've actually made real progress, and there we go. Trixie! Looks like she would be a creative character, but uh, no, she is a unique character specifically only existing in Tony Hawk Pro Skater 2X and the Dreamcast version of Tony Hawk 2, I believe. Replacing Private Carrera, a character I despise. Another reason this version is better. We also have female creative skaters in Tony Hawk 2X, a new feature. This was how I unlocked Spider-Man originally. But yeah, that's just a hint of the cool stuff. Unique levels, unique characters, exclusively in this version of the game, which I will be showing off next time in Tony Hawk 2X.